All right, welcome to Fantasy Grounds dev video on how to use the uh, image meta metadata builder tool to define how big images should be drawn within the first person view, uh, 2.5D, 3D view sort of screen. So here I've got a couple examples. I have a WebP file and some JPEG stuff. Uh, basically what you're going to do is you'll have this screen open when you launch it and you'll just drag an image in and drop it. And then sometimes you have to click off to the side here if I switch out an image. Uh, if it doesn't update immediately, just click on the screen. Make sure it has focus. And it'll load the image in here, show you what it looks like. And you'll see that there's a couple things. There's set clip region, set measurement region, and some measurement scales, and then some other little sections over here. Then there's a load image and a save image. So load image you don't have to do because that would be if you type in something here and then hit load image. But if you just drag it and drop it into the center, Area, it'll automatically pre-fill that and load the image for you automatically. So clip region basically means you're going to clip out a part of the image entirely. So if I set a clip image region of like this little section here, it would just draw this little smokestack. Um, most cases, I hardly ever use this. I don't really ever uh, clip anything. It could be like if you have a bunch of like garbage data like below the character, you don't want that to render in 3D view. You could go ahead and just set clip region and then click a top and, and bottom position um, and it'll clear that within fantasy grounds. But I'm gonna use the set measurement region. You'll do it the same way, essentially. Uh, you'll say set measurement region. It'll tell you to set a region with a known width or height and then click the top left of the region. So let's say that the adamantine golem is supposed to be 20 feet tall. Uh, I would look at the description of the character or look them up online and see how big it is. So the top left would be kind of you know over here somewhere if you're only going to measure the height, you only really need to click here. So, I'll, But I'll say, okay, top left box. And it says, uh, now click the bottom right of the region. So I'll click down here somewhere. And then basically you'll see that it sets the X and the Y the, um, of the top left position. So X15, 224, and then the bottom of 826 by 789. And then here I'll say, well, the height for that region, I want it to be 20 feet tall. Now the other important aspect is that you need to know the expected grid height of this character. So if the, if this is a large creature and it's drawn in a two by two square, then by default, fantasy grounds with none of this backup information is going to assume that it should draw this guy 20 feet tall. Exactly. So here I would just say, okay, we'll set that to be two, but let's say, uh, or actually it's, it's 10 foot space. Yeah. So in this case, if he's 20 feet tall, he'll extend beyond the 10 foot range that it would normally do. So he'll be, he'll be taller than normal. Um, and then once you do that, you'll say set center floor X, Y position, click somewhere in the middle of his feet. This is where the uh, center point of the character will be drawn. Uh, so if, if he's got like a split stance or something like that, you might uh, spread that out a little bit more. If he's a flyer, then you might also click the float button and that'll set him as a floater. And then you, you just hit save XML and it saves the file here. And so now you'll see it says, oh, here's an adamantine golem XML file. If I open that up, you'll see that it basically is just saving these information. It saves these numbers. And then Fantasy Grounds, when you load that asset onto an NPC and put them in the combat tracker and then load them onto the scene, it'll actually use this information to calculate how big or how small they should be drawn. So again, the important steps is that this expected grid size needs to match up because if this was a medium creature and he was supposed to be drawn as one, and you said, okay, draw him as 20 feet tall, um, but he actually is a large creature, it'll make him 40 feet tall because it's going to do the math for you kind of automatically. But that will also allow us to uh, shrink or grow creatures within Fantasy Grounds and then have them proportionally shrink or grow. So if someone is enlarged or shrunk or whatever with the spell, it'll deal with that for us kind of automatically. So um, I'll just do a couple other real quick examples here just to show you. I'm going to use some uh, non-transparent background stuff too, just to kind of demo it. But like this guy here, uh, if I only wanted to do his height, I could just click on his head and then his feet because it's going to ignore the width if I'm only setting a height value and say, okay, make this, uh, I don't know, three feet tall, for instance. Um, and he's normally going to be drawn as a one grid square creature. Set the center floor X, Y here, and then hit save. He's good. If I want him to be floater, I would click float. You see it raises up the Y uh, dimensions here, and then I could save that, and then he would then be floating off the ground. So his his uh, selection circle would be below him, and then he would be extended up above that as if he was flying through the air. 
let's do a couple other examples just to demo. Uh, so like this guy, this is a non-transparent background, <clears throat> but maybe he's only 10 feet tall. He's going to probably extend really high out of the space. A lot of uh, smaller like humanoid creatures, as an example, let's just grab, um, grab some unusual ones here. So like this guy here, for instance. So maybe his head to his feet are going to be like, I don't know, 5.9 feet tall. This is everything is in feet. Um, and then I could just say, you know, save that, set a center floor position to be here, right at his foot, save the XML. I'll drag a few more. Here's a bugbear. So a bugbear, let's say this creature is still, I don't remember if bugbears are, I think they're still medium creatures. So they would render taller. So maybe she is from here down to, she's kind of squatting. So maybe down to here, make that um, so eight feet tall and then set the center floor piece. The center floor in this one, I would probably split the difference between, I'd, I'd try to match it under their head or their center torso position. And then I would maybe like pick the middle part of their split stance. I would click maybe there and then hit save XML. And then basically you just work through all of them that way, um, drag them over. If you want something to be wide, like if you don't know how big this guy really should be, but he's a 10 foot creature, you could say set the measurement height so that he's basically Maybe his feet will extend a little bit outside of the space. It'll make him look like he's like cool and imposing. Click here and then maybe here and then say make that 10 foot wide with an expected grid size of two. Set a center floor position, maybe right at his face. Save that. <clears throat> and then, uh, you know, just test it out. The best way to do it is to throw all these, uh, you know, set the camera view images for each of these monsters and then throw them on the screen and then just compare them side by side to see are they, do they look like they're the right size uh, or do you need to modify it further. Um, here's an example of like a ledge character. So like that one, maybe you say, well, this guy's, you know, the head's only supposed to be, I don't know, how tall is a normal head? One, one and a half feet or 1.2 feet. But he fits in one square and then he's going to float up. <clears throat> Set a center floor here, but he's going to be floating in the air and save it. Normally you would say set center first and then you do float and then save. Um, but if you say over top, it'll just overwrite its previous value. But that's all you do. And uh, that'll make a bunch of little XML files. Those XML files should be in the same location as the uh, image file. And then whenever Fantasy Grounds loads that into the system, it'll look for that XML. And if it's there, it'll use it. If not, it'll just use the uh, expected grid size and then do that calculation automatically. Um, so there you go. If you have any questions, give me a call.